Look in my eyes for my mind state. I'm on the grind 25, hey. Money on my mind, that's how I play. If you got it now, this what I say. Hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. What up, episode 28. This is like my favorite NFL player ever number, Marshall Falk, yeah. 28, Yeah, which what he looks say? like. God, I love, oh, this God, is I where we look. look. Yes. This you is where we look. You can look anywhere. Yeah, all, oh, the, all three of these. This okay. is, yeah, but this one right here all is right. a prominent one. Episode 28 of the Swerve City Podcast, man. We're doing big things. We just had a WWE PC YouTube page, actually, video of the, of the podcast drop today. Yeah. What is it? August 5th, I think it is. What are we looking at? August 5th, everybody. Yeah, so it's dropped August 5th. No clue when y'all going to see this, but yeah, you, if you if you subscribe on the Patreon, you should be seeing it on Saturday. We're getting rain and thunderstorms outside because mm-hmm. Dose Straps brings the thunder Ooh. when she comes up in here. Ooh, it, is, right. it is thunder. She's Thor Darkness. up in this piece. Yes. Good one. But yes, Good one. episode 28 of YouTube. Dot com backslash source city podcast you know if you want to watch this subscribe please the numbers are jumping and climbing thank you all for subscribing to everything patreon patreon.com backslash source city podcast we got exclusive content coming to that every other week i should say but yeah um i'm what's gonna turn patreon? it over on patreon yeah what's that it's like an exclusive little thing we I give them extra content but it comes with a price you got to pay we don't charge a lot but you know everything that we do get from it goes back into the podcast so it's not like I'm spending on this nice shirt or nothing like that it's not that <laughs> nice but it goes back into the podcast it goes like, if you've seen if you've been following us for the last year and a half two years we get upgraded equipment every couple months and that's come from you guys okay Facts. so we got this new monitor yes we got these the, the freaking microphones we got a sponsor around Seattle thank Shout you around Seattle around Seattle for sponsoring <laughs> us but we get new things we get we get promote we can do music videos those go on the Patreon early early releases and stuff before everybody else gets to see it on YouTube and subscribe subscribing to all that but thank you keep pledging keep Ask the Discord as well. Keep communicating with us. Sometimes I'm on there, sometimes I'm not. But who knows? I might I might jump on there and talk to y'all a little bit. Give you some, a little background of what's going on in my daily life. TZ, take it over. We got some plugs and announcements coming up. What's going on? Yeah, so if you guys are familiar with everything that we do, we always have something going on. You know, one thing about us is we stay current with uh, with content. And I stay eating junk food. And uh, everything, that we're, everything that we're doing. So the first announcement that I want to make is that we are... In the process of finishing up our album, our group album, GPS, slash Erica Sun, which Ooh. is a double disc project. If you guys are familiar, once again, with like Outcast. Damn, look at you guys. You know, crisp, with, uh, crisp quality. The Love Below, uh, Love Below speaker box. And there's a double disc project. We are now in production. We are halfway through our project right now, getting this done. There will be music videos coming. There will be a exclusive music video coming. There is so much great content on this album, and we are actually in the process of finishing up this double disc. About halfway there. Right now. So there is so much, so much great feedback that we got from the first album from Humble Beginners on all digital platforms right now. If you guys do not have that, make sure you guys go download that, and maybe you can get Bailey to check it out too. So, Maybe. you know, you guys... Mikazi's a fan of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you know, okay. We, we he's a hard ear. He's a hard person to freaking yes, impress. Yes, yes. And he's, so, he's he messing is. with it. Yep. That is, you know, that is uh, the beautiful cover of the album GPS that we have announced, which you guys will see. You guys are wearing the same we kinda just took thing. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Just took I like it. Uh, Great outfit. Nothing gets past you. <laughs> 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 the album is coming out on Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day. The double disc album, GPS, Erica's Son, is coming out on Thanksgiving Day. A lot of great material on there. You guys will get enough music for your new year to sacrifice your time on during this quarantine. Mm-hmm. And speaking of quarantines and speaking of other things that we are doing, we are doing a special quarantine concert. Mm. What? We are doing a concert. Now... I'm going to put this out in the universe now. If you have been a guest on Swear City Podcast and other guests, <laughs> we will be in a special set that I will not disclose. 
Sanitized. Sanitized. Yes. We will have a DJ. Shout out to my man DJ Skilo. He's a DJ. He will be playing our music. I'll spray down that DJ table. With the microphone, with the banner, and we will be doing a set of songs live in concert with you guys. We're streaming on the Instagram live, the YouTube stream. You know how we, we also going to do it on YouTube, stream yeah. that live, so you can always go back and watch it. But we want you to appreciate it while it's happening yeah. live. Be a part of history. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I think, I would say, if you're on the same page with me. We usually are. Maybe within the limits of what can happen, we invite a few guests in too to watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? If- also, also to this, after we cut the stream, if you are subscribed to the Patreon, we perform three extra songs off camera, off stream. Yes. Ooh. Just for the Discord members only. That's so a total of nine records. Yo, this is more this is a better time to subscribe and get on board with the Source City project, man. I'm telling you, it's big. Absolutely. So, you know, you guys make sure you tune in to everything we have going on. Twitter.com backslash Source City Pod, YouTube.com backslash Source City Podcast, Patreon.com backslash Source City Podcast. Stay tuned. Thanksgiving Day. Stay tuned to this classic album and this wonderful concert series. As soon as we have an official date, that will be announced by the next episode for sure. For our concert. Now, without further ado, it's time we go over here to the WWE SmackDown Women's Champion. Just one half of the Women's Tag Championships. Miss Bailey Doe Straps over here. What's going on? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great graphic. Shout out to what? Go Mike, Mike the, the goat. Mike the goat. Mike the goat. Jordan Mike the goat. goat. We got Mike the goat Mike the over goat. there. Look at that graphic. Awesome. It's making me look cool. Google me. That ain't hard to do, though. <laughs> Let's just be honest. You're right. You're right. Thanks. Let's just be honest. Come yes. on now. Okay. So we got you over here. Came along with like I, I've, once again, everybody in here appreciates you, you coming in, taking Thank your you. time out of your day, of your busy schedule. SmackDown, Raw, NXT, going to all three brands on a, every shoot weekly basis. Yeah. To defend these titles, to perform for everybody at home. We appreciate your time making it making time for us. Yeah, you know, of course. Homie, homie situation. We worked around the schedule a little bit, changed the days up. We we hear thirty for minutes you. late. I brought the storm, but it's still gonna be great. That's why she it's, was late. She's yeah, like, I got a storm behind storm, me. You know, yeah, yeah. I was running from it. Man, so basically, we're gonna we're gonna jump back a little bit. We don't usually talk too much wrestling. We want to get into the person, okay. the individual, but we we can't have you here and not discuss being part of the four horsewomen of the WWE coming from NXT WWE main roster talk about that time what y'all were going through the struggles what y'all had to do to push the women's division forward and not just like in WWE but in like women's wrestling in the world yeah like discuss that that's a big uh, that's huge shoo it was a, it was hard but I always like um Man, I think we all just got really lucky getting there at the same time, around the same time, you know? Yep. Like, I think if I were to be hired six months later or six months earlier or a year later, or a year like, it just wouldn't have worked out the way it, it did, you know? When I got there, Charlotte and Sasha were already there. Um, Becky got there six months later, I think, when we started at the Performance right. Center. This is 2014? Um, I got there in 2013, January oh, wow. 2013, and then we got to the PC in ju- June 2013, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was only in Tampa for like six months in FC- the FCW arena. Yeah. And then we moved on, and that's when a bunch of people got hired, and Becky was one of them. And it was like, uh, there we are. Wow. I think that's our first. That's in Philly, where I think Sh- uh, Sasha and Charlotte main evented. Or did we have the four way there? No, I think Sasha and Charlotte main evented that show, which is a huge deal mm-hmm. to main event in freaking Philly, right? As a yes. huge wrestling town. Huge. And that was when NXT first started traveling outside of Florida, really. Um, that, that was a juggernaut class altogether. Dude. Like these, that, like that class, just like with y- y'all four, and then also on the men's side, shaped what we see on TV now. Right. And yeah. the industry, too, period, yeah. should be told. Like Samoa Joe, Finn Balor. Um, we had Neville. uh even Tyson Kidd or yeah. TJ was there. Like that was when like Natty was coming in. We had Cesaro coming in. Like yep. Sami they were Zane. to like help us. Yeah, Sammy, yep. everybody. Like, and I'm probably leaving a bunch of people out. But um, 
it was such a crazy class, but it was awesome. It felt like not just for like the women's evolution or whatever for us, yeah. but for NXT as a whole and all those people, we all had like something to prove and we all like for reals wanted to be better than Raw and SmackDown and yeah. and everything. It was we were trying to get it up and going because when I got there we were on Hulu. Like I NXT that. was on Hulu, it was yep. crazy. Wow. And then we um then we started getting on the network, I think like a year after I got there or something. I was there for like the first takeover or NXT arrival, whatever yeah. it was. Um but we all kind of just I don't know I don't know how it happened, but um me and Sasha clicked right away. Um and then she got along with them and we all just kind of together were I would watch them in training and be like, uh, they're pretty good. And yeah. they're pretty serious. Like Becky coming in, I was like, damn, look at those arm drags. Charlotte was just like naturally, freaking yeah. obviously can do a backflip and land on her feet and then do like, okay, what's next? I'm like, yeah. Can you do a headlock takeover? And just like, Boom, you right know? there, got it. Yeah. And um, good God. just, I don't know. I just saw something in them when we were training that was just awesome. And I loved it. I was like, I can, I can. I can do this because the first month for me was rough when I started because I didn't mm. want to be this like diva girly, you know, I didn't know mm. how. But when I saw them, I was like, all right, let's just have good matches. At least I'll have fun doing that. I don't know right. how long it's going to last. But then it just kind of built from that. And we were seeing what was on the product then, which was, you know, the girls like Bella's and Natty. And um, and we had Paige. When I first got there, Paige was there too. Um, but then when Paige got called up, like, it they was weren't like really the tail getting, end of that, yeah. 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 They weren't really getting the opportunity, and we were, so we we're taking full advantage of it in, um, you know, marquee matches and main event matches. There's a little, like, risk with doing that, too, because, like, there's, there's always that generation ahead of you that looks back at the generation, or I would say the generation before you that looks and see what the generation coming up is doing, and they kind of, like, chastise you for it. Yeah. Like, oh, you're pushing the bar too, you're doing too much, you're pushing the envelope, you're pushing the bar too high, there's no much higher you can go from that, and they kind of, like, you kind of get chastised. Do you, do you guys ever get that struggle of, like, being like, you're doing a bit too much, you're doing too far, you need to bring it back a little bit? No, we never no? got, like, not no? even, like, Triple H let us do whatever, our coaches let yeah. us do whatever, you know? They were, yeah. like, loving that we were going all out every single night, not just on takeovers or TVs, yeah. during these shows it was so hard not to because these fans were like they were ready for it they were hungry for women's wrestling to be freaking as awesome as they know it could be um but like as far as the girls you know i remember natalia just like she would always talk about because she would come you know be on the shows i've teamed yeah. with her a bunch on nxt but like she's like yeah you guys just you get so much time and you get the opportunity and the tv time to to tell these stories and like you can tell that some of the girls on, w on, on Raw or SmackDown are like kind of jealous and being like yeah. damn but you guys get that time that's why it's so awesome and that's why the fans love it and it's like yeah we do I don't really know what to tell you I'm well, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like it's not like they were mad at us for it it was like yeah. they were jealous of it it's like damn I wish we can have that yeah. and, it, it, and it took a long time but I think once it started catching on and takeovers and all that stuff. I don't want to say it was just us. Obviously, it's not us four, right, but right. we were a thing and we were relied on each other a lot. So, let me ask you this. You have four different personalities. Yeah. Four different people that have four goals. Four different archetypes, four different I archetypes. see, honestly. So bad. Four different goals. You guys have different backgrounds. I like using that word archetype. I've been using that a lot lately on the Sports City Podcast. Just to let you know I know. <laughs> when does, how do you guys keep it with the, within each other? Me and him, we do a lot of things together. Even let's, I'll use this video games. It's competitive. <laughs> when, when do you... We played last night. It was competitive. When, <laughs> when, do you, when do you, like... How do you four, how do you four stay within the competition of each other? Even as being friends, like you go, you want to be the best at what you do. Mm -hmm. And you have three other personalities. That, those are your friends, but you want to be the best. You want to put on the best matches. Tell me a little bit about the, the competition level between you four and wanting to be the top person and to excel at what you want to do for your goals. I think the competition is what made us stand out or what made us, like, get to the level that we did. It was like, you know, Charlotte and Sasha were main eventing shows for a long time. Um, you, she, you see she's the champion, right? And Sasha's the champion in this picture. Um, so it was like, obviously, you know, we love each other and we're there for each other, but it's like, damn, like, I wish I was in that title picture with you, or I wish I had the title. So it was, like, always, it was always friendly, but it was always, like, in your mind, like, dude, I'm better than you, and I know that I am. I just need the match to prove it. I need the opportunity to prove it. But that was in all of our heads, and we all knew it. It's not like we were, you know, talking 
behind it talking whatever. I don't know what we could save here on a Swerve City podcast. We post. Said it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't Mike, know. If, more work. <laughs> I don't know if like you know we weren't like talking crap behind each other's back or anything. We knew what we were all out, what we were there for, and that's what I think made it awesome because. Um, I think Becky and I during this time were kind of like the underdogs of the group where it's like I was gonna say that. Yeah. I've always felt that, like when watching the product. Yeah, we I've were always, always felt underdogs. That. And it was like we didn't know why. Like the fans, we were the freaking biggest baby faces, I think. Like, you know, Becky was getting like great reactions. It took her a while, took me a while character wise, but um we were always just trying, 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 trying. Um, but once Becky got that match with Sasha at one of the takeovers yep. and, you know, I had matches with Becky and Charlotte and stuff, it just took time, but it was, uh, I don't know. We all needed each other for sure. It's funny how, like, um, when you say like, um, you, you say like it took a little bit longer for you guys, you and Becky, mm -hmm. but it's just like Sasha was like the talker out of this yep. initially. Yeah. She was like the, 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 she was very glamorous. She shined, you know, she was like the. She was like more the prominent presence as I far think, as like the gimmick. Yeah, she's yeah. like I think she's the one who found herself the quickest. you know the quickest, right? Yes. And I wouldn't say the quickest because I watched her go through the transformation of finding right. the boss but character on, on TV. On TV, yeah, she freaking had it. Yes. Like she knew what she was. But it's funny how like the role of like um Becky became the talker out of right. everybody. Yeah. That's where she like kind of blew up and because it's like became the talker. It's, it's funny, like everybody ha is, is talented in their own ways, but they all also kind of have the same, y'all are all talented in the same ways as well. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's just everybody just got their turn to like, oh, well, they can, all of you guys can talk, but now mm -hmm. you're the talker now. Yeah, I'm you know the annoying I mean? one. Yeah, I but guess. <laughs> but you're the talk. You're the prominent one. You're yeah. the dose straps. You're getting the blueprint. You're getting like uh, you're getting all the taglines out. But that was Becky, it's like for the pe better part of last year. Right. Before that, it was Charlotte. Yeah. So like everybody's getting their prominent things when they get the like, and that's what makes you all the four horsewomen too. Because when each one of y'all can step out and be the one, right. each one of y'all can lead. Each one of y'all. Now it goes into one of the points I was going to say was like, how does it feel like now you're like being responsible as a leader in the locker room now for the newer uh, females to come in, the newer women to come from NXT? Or do you look back at NXT and see, like, have that leader presence? Do, how does that feel? Um, or do you use that as much as well? You know what I mean? I, I think I felt it more so when the, those three were called up to Raw and SmackDown, where I was, like, kind of by myself. So I always, yeah. like, you know, saw myself as, as a leader because I came from wrestling. So I think, um, you know, we had, like, Eva Marie there, and Charlotte didn't even wrestle before this or um, Carmella or uh, Liv Morgan, like girls like that that didn't wrestle before this that I was very close with um, would come to me and be like, hey, can you watch my match or what did you think of this? What do you think of that? And I love doing that stuff. But it wasn't until those three left that I was r literally in that role. I was the champion and I was there the longest and I, you know, the company trusted me and the coaches were, you know, I was kind of like, coaching classes or coaching mm. and and helping out with matches so um that felt like where i belonged like i want to help people and i want to bring the locker room up like mm. i want everyone to freaking get the opportunities i want them to feel confident in their opportunities i want them to feel confident when they come out like i just love that because uh i love wrestling and i think it can just give so much to people. Like okay. I want people to feel how freaking happy I felt, how how happy I feel doing it. Right. So that's why I, what would motivate me to help the other girls. Um, and nowadays, since we kind of have you know all the same lock, uh, NXT people, to be honest, like um, it kind of feels like we're a whole right now. Like mm -hmm. Natalia's obviously, you know, she's been there the longest. Um, Mickey James and and Tamina is yeah. they're like locker room leaders, like. Tamina is a freaking mama bear of the locker room, you know? I so that. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, we already have those, but it's more of like family, more of, uh, we're all kind of see each other the same, you know, we're all there for each other if we need it. Um, but I still do have certain people that come up to me that is like, Hey, can you watch my, my match? What did you think of this? Yeah. Um, and even like storyline wise or character wise, which I enjoy more than I thought I would when I first started here. All right. Like, yeah, could you watch my Raw Underground fight? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to see blood. I had $200 right? I 
on you. <laughs> oh, I'm I mean, losing a pot load I of money. I know. I was, Bruh. Dude, oh. I sat there the other night and I was like, <laughs> I was actually watching with Seth and I was like, come on, let me see if I'm freaking blood. We were off camera, so no one's going to see us. Right. But um, yeah, uh, I'll step in there, you know, if, I, if I'm feeling Ooh, it. You, you know? feeling froggy? You going to jump? Feeling, if I need some extra pocket cash. <laughs> well, let's just know I'm going to be betting on you. Actually. Because I keep losing money on this thing. Actually, if you want to bet on me, Renee Young, I just got called out on whatever. It was like a live SummerSlam 92 watch oh, yeah. party that they were doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Punk, Punk, Punk said that we should have this match or whatever fight, whatever you call it. And I'm down, dude. Let's go. I've been calling you out forever, and if you can't do it because you don't have wrestling gear, we don't have to go in the wrestling ring. We'll meet you in the freaking underground. underground. Shane McMahon. No rules. Let's do it. No rules. No sanctions. No sa <laughs> Shoot, they just pulling people out of the crowd anyway. You're going to fight. Yeah. You walk around, you're going to fight. Yeah. I mean. Don't get I too mean, close in that next interview. Yeah, I'm I just saying. Just pull you over. Yeah, true. I, I got pulled in. I was betting. I was, yeah, I, know. I was just out there like I trying to make some money. Bro. You'll get some of your money back. Sure, them Minnesota Golden Gophers is ruthless, man. Shelton, he oh, don't I need to be grinding people like that. <laughs> yep. yeah. uh. That's true. Speaking of speaking of family, uh, tell us a little bit about your childhood. And uh, we're born and raised in California, correct? Yep. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your childhood and your early beginnings as early Bailey. Tell me a little bit about that. your well, humble beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> On all, all I was. Right um, I have three siblings. I have two older mm -hmm. sisters and a younger brother. And Surrounded I was. Surrounded by girls. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was a tomboy, so I was like. Ooh. Me and my brother were very close. Like okay. We were, you know, we grew up watching wrestling together and we were wrestling in the living room and I was playing basketball, always playing outside. And my sisters were kind of like they were closer than, you know. Yeah. So, But um, I was in second grade, I think, where my parents went through a divorce. So that really like brought us all together where before it was kind of like I'm, I'm close with my brother and you guys are close and that's fine. But mm -hmm. like, you know, going through a long divorce and all the, you know, court stuff and you know, you all this counseling it. stuff. Yeah. Um, it really brought us together. So mm -hmm. I'm so lucky. Like we are all four very close to this day. We Good. don't, we don't all live. My, my oldest sister and I both live in California in the Bay area. My brother is actually in the military in Washington and my sister lives in, my middle sister lives in Austin. So we're all kind of everywhere, yeah. but, um, we all still like, you know, group texts and talk and zoom talk and all that stuff, especially during this freaking crazy time. Um, but I played sports, you know, my whole life growing up. Basketball was my main sport. Mm. Um, yeah, it was so funny. Like during my senior year, so I got to, I don't know how they do it everywhere else, but like varsity, you usually get to varsity your junior year, right? And yeah, like yeah. sports, right? right. Unless so, you're good. You go like, like me. Oh. Uh -huh. Is that yeah. what we getting at? Sophomore year. Oh. Yeah. Sophomore okay. year, I made it to varsity. So I was very good. I was a team captain senior year. Um, this will all come back to wrestling at some point. But, um, Get away from wrestling. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, senior year, I was freaking team captain. We weren't a good team, but I was very Where proud. At? There I am. Where are you the at? corner over there. Holler. There. Look at that crazy ass hair. <laughs> look, What's look wrong with me? Why my man just like. Just Dude, he's so tall. Why Glenn Jacobs just this? like coaching the team right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're not showing his face. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. I see it. Continuity. Yeah. I got it. All right. Dude, this, my coach, this is a head coach, Coach Cavasso. Coach C, she's the best. Dude, I saw a friend. I'm still friends with her on Facebook and all that stuff. Awesome. She taught me discipline, how, how to freaking work hard, how to push yourself. And she was also my English teacher junior year, I want to say. Cool. So during the off seasons, because you got to keep a certain GPA, yeah. during the off season, she was like, you're going to do track and cross country. I was like, she made you. I hate running. She's like, yeah, but that's going to keep your grades up. That's going to make keep you in shape for mm -hmm. basketball. I was like, Freaking A. So I did track, did cross country. I ended up loving them. Like just, you know, but she taught me that I needed to just, yeah, I can't just chill in the off season and I need to oh, keep man. my grades up because she wanted me to go to college and play basketball and all this stuff. I have a question. Yeah. There's two type of ball players. Oh. <laughs> There's two type of basketball players. Uh-huh. There's the team player. You know, where, you know, you know, whoever she's so tall, she might have been the center. Yep. You, you, what you play? Two guard? Uh, yeah, I said point guard and shooting guard. Figured. Yeah. You know, like, you, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, and you know, you, you, you distribute and you pass the ball or 
if you're varsity and sophomore, obviously you putting the ball in the basket. Right, right. You I was a you got shooter, the ball, dude. Yeah, you put up Westbrook shoot. numbers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Eight for 31. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shoot. I shot 30, 32%. Yeah. <laughs> I put up 40. I was a three-point shooter. Oh, you really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the chick next to me, her name's Noelle. She was a senior. So this is my sophomore year. Mm. Um, she was a senior, and I thought she was awesome. Like, she was, like, my little hero. And she was, excuse me, she was so good. So I wanted to score as many points as her, I guess, you right. know? Yeah. So the um, coach never, like, passed the ball or she never got, you never got, like. No, I honest, I never had that problem to, like, yeah. you know, I wasn't selfish, but I was, like, I know but, I can make. But, but I'm going to get mine. But, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to. You mine. know why, too? Because <laughs> in the newspaper, if you get the local news, they have, like, high school games in there where it yep. says your last name and your points or whatever, yeah. that's all I wanted. <laughs> I like, I saved all the newspapers. I would highlight it. I'm like, that's me, Martinez. What was that's your, high, me, what was your highest score? Um, I honestly, it's probably only like 23 or something. Only? Shoot. Only? Yeah. Shoot. And now sophomore year? Shoot. You're doing great. Sophomore year. Sophomore yeah. year? Sophomore only year. 23? I made a game-winning shot, but it was in a summer league. But still, a game-winning, like a buzzer beater. Oh. Contested? That's the crate that, huh? Contested? What's what's that? What do you mean? When somebody can hand your face. Hand in your face. Oh, like, uh. Or wide open. No, it was like a, yeah, it was like a layup. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was like you an out of bounds, okay. out of bounds pass. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know? but it, I mean, the summer league doesn't really count for anything. It's just again, my coach keeping me in shape. It during counts the for summer. your confidence, dude. It was a it coolest for feeling confidence. ever. I got a buzzer beater and like a quarter. It wasn't like the end. It was the end of the quarter. It wasn't like but oh, still, down by two. It's we still such a shot. cool experience. Like, yeah, I was like, you know? oh, I'm going back to the bench. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was, I, I wasn't that good at basketball. Like, I was, I was okay, but I was like, everybody was just better than me. That was right. my problem. There was a man. I loved basketball. She Football also, she also made us. So this is her um, assistant coach, who I'm still cool with too. Um, this, I don't know why this chick's not in the picture, and nobody's gonna watch this. So no, from the team's gonna know. So the, so Glenn Jacobs. Um, <laughs> niece, her big niece, red machine yes, over there. Her niece, red team. His niece, <laughs> yes, um, was on the team as well. And my friend Maisha, this chick, had a holiday party, and we all went to the holiday party. Uh, and we were up very late, all hanging out. You know, yep. We had practice and like holiday training the next day, but we all made a pact. Was like, you guys, it's so late. We have to get there at like seven a.m. Let's just. Let's just say we forgot. Like, so we were like not going to show up, right? <laughs> it was the first day of training. We were like, let's just not show up. I just don't want to. We all made a pact. None of us showed up except his freaking niece and told on us. Oh, wow. And then we get calls saying like, you guys come to training. I know you're, I know you're like trying to skip out. So our coach made us run laps. She's like, as soon as you got there, start running. So we're just running in the gym, running in the gym two hours running oh my god and then she just stood in the middle of the of the court and she like blew her whistle she's like why the hell are you guys still running and then we're like you never told us to stop she's like you never asked to stop so she was just like good like that like freaking <laughs> wow. messing with us and like oh. making us pay she was really good at it oh wow it was rough i had military drill sergeants that were like that oh yeah oh my yeah. god that's that's what that reminds me of oh she was any rough. type of punishment like that is I, I get i go back yeah. yeah, that's my mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so we're going to go into the little fun stuff. We like to talk about music. All right. We like yeah, to talk I about, and music. we have a nice little special thing we're going to do today, just like little comparisons, because everybody's doing these versus battles on IG Live. So, what was your what's I'm your favorite really genre of music? Sweating. I would say. Um, we, I got the fan. I got the humidifier. No, I know it's because up. my shirt. You know, like I have to Some hide muscles. And, uh, yeah, too out. many <laughs> muscles pushing up against each yeah, other. Yeah, <laughs> Um, my favorite type of music, rock, alternative rock. There it is. Holler. Okay. I picked yes. the right genre today. Yes. Gotcha. So, you know, these versus battles, I don't know if you're familiar with what's been going on in the versus battles. Nope. There's been, uh, there's been particularly more in the hip hop world, but people are on. I would actually like to see some bands. Or I would some like pop, to, I would like to see singers. that too. I think there's, there's going to starting to sway that way. Okay. Um, Thanks. To, I feel to, that. <laughs> Pretty known, like legendary rappers, or they sometimes they are on IG with each other, or they meet oh, up cool. and they do like IG battles where they perform their legendary songs together. 20, 20, 20 songs, songs each. 
And 20 songs a piece? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot. I do, you, do a song, is, you do a song for like a minute 30. You do your classic song for a minute 30. I do my song for a minute 30, another song. Wow. And it goes into wow, that's awesome. 40, 40 songs, basically. Vote basically. which one had the better. Right. Oh. Or who's the, like, he won this one, he won this one. But for, cool. for the rapper's egos, they call it a separate celebration of their music. They don't want to say it's verses. But for the guy's egos... If of you know, course. You know, we know what's going you on. You know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, let me get 20 songs deep. See what <laughs> yeah. I'll throw out yeah. there. I'm just talking, man. <laughs> <laughs> let me find out. <laughs> so, like, if there was a, a versus battle, right? And you pick, you saw this band's 20 best songs and this band's 20 best songs. Lincoln Park versus Limp Biscuit mm. in a versus battle. Who would win? Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't choose them to do it, but... Um, who would you yeah. say would be more counterpart for Lincoln Park then? Because I had trouble putting this together. I'm I'm terrible at this. Well, this one. genre, I'm sure, is hard. I mean, well, if I were to choose from I can them. name bands, but I don't know if they, they measure up to the predecessor of who this one would be. Exa- I mean, there's so much, like, rock out there. Wait, who did you say? Lincoln Park and... Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Probably, I, probably, I want to say I was a bigger Limp Biscuit fan because really? of wrestling. Uh, you know, like are. who doesn't like Undertaker's freaking rolling theme song, or like the WrestleMania freaking theme song? You did know, you buy all the anthology of... CDs and stuff. You oh yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I did. I even yeah. bought the ones that they sang themselves and rapped themselves. Yeah, yeah. I didn't buy those, but I listened to them. Oh, yes, I bought them. I yes. Bought them. Yeah, I, I did not buy. I, I did not purchase. Them. No, sir. Yeah. I did. Mr. Perfect. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Um, so, what, that's okay, let's say, let's do a comparison then. Mm-hmm. Who, what bands would you do, did you grow up listening to that you would like to see together? That I would like in to see versus. together? In a versus battle. Yeah. Like, um, the bands that you're familiar with. So you think it would be a tight battle. Right. Uh, for me, it would be Paramore, my number one favorite, and Pierce the Veil. Mm. Yeah. I'm familiar with Paramore. Right. Okay. Yeah. Pierce ain't, that, the ain't that up your, uh, ain't, ain't that your lane? <coughs> Paramore. Paramore more so than Pierce Yeah, I would say Paramore is more. I mean, they're like very different music, but Paramore is more of like a mainstream, I guess, you know, and Pierce Savelle's like, I was in high school listening to them freaking screamo music, and right. like they've, you know, obviously evolved since then, but I, I don't they're know two the bands that I can sing word for word all their songs. I like a Flyleaf song every once in a while. Flyleaf, yeah. So what it was on a video game, so I liked yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, me. It wasn't like the what wrestling. Was, what was the song? Because um, there's only one I know. Um, I'm what so is... sick. Oh yeah. Because I'd be a rock band, like yeah. sweating. Yeah. <laughs> third floor. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I like the drums. So I like oh, okay. the drum section. I was like, I'm gonna do it on hard mode. Hey, nothing. Foot pedal. Like awesome. Time, bro. What is like not your genre? It's and not. you're playing jo- Guitar Hero. It's all kind of. <laughs> what is this? You start, you start messing up. Like, what is this song? You know, you to the song. Then, Bro, <laughs> you know. yo, we talk about Tony Hawk's soundtracks. Oh, Ta- I, yeah, me and Tyler Breeze. Yeah, freaking, oh. oh, we love Tony Hawk's soundtracks. I found so oh, many people. One. Oh, like Underground was dope. Yeah, Underground had a like just. Underground like hip hop artists and bands and stuff. It, Here it just, I am doing it everything I can. I think Tony Hawk Two might have had like the most addicting soundtrack though. The second one they did, like destruction. If I hear it, I'm sure. Oh man, that's like the one that generation did destroy ourselves. Okay, yes, yes, I know. Oh, yeah. I would take every other song off and just play it out. We would we would be setting up the ring in NXT and Breeze would play it on his phone so we could just be like, nah, like uh, just listening yo, to it. I swear to like, that was an addicting nothing, soundtrack. Yes. Like video game soundtracks. There was nothing like nothing. It. Like you would get like a song and like I was not familiar with a lot of our alternative bands at mm-hmm. the time. It wasn't until I got older until I learned to appreciate it. I grew up in an R&B and hip-hop household. So when I got around to the... Are you a Chili Peppers fan? Yeah. So I, I, that's my first band. Yeah. And I was like... I was, awesome. I was put on Dave Matthews and Red Hot Chili Peppers. Those were wow. my two bands I was first put on. Yeah. Mine was Alice in Chains. Yeah? Great. That was like awesome. my... I, like their catalog. I was like, I know their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And Rage. 
Yeah. Raging Against Machines. And I think those are like the entries. The entries? Everybody's that's their, like, well, who's your first like entry band Entry band that you listened to and started listening? Yeah, like, those are like great ones. So that's yeah. you just start out with like Red Hot Chili Peppers, yes. Alice in Chains, right. and Rage. Yeah. And you just go down the rabbit hole from there. So, so, or Linkin like Park. It was funny because, you know, they know I, I, love, I love rapping and making music. They was like, Anthony I love Dummy Bears. Anthony Keenis, you know, he sounds like he's rapping. I think you like it. So they put me on a lot of the stuff, and then like the, they put me on the funky stuff, and then I got into more under the bridge and more of the deeper stuff with, with the singing. Yeah. So that helped branch me more into the alternative side and getting my history. Now let me ask you this: Have you ever went to any any concerts of your favorite bands? Oh any, yes, of who? plenty. Finally, tell me. Plenty. Uh, I've been to, I've been to, I've been to so many Paramore concerts, but I've also been to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert with I would love um, to go to that. freaking Chris Jericho. Like, dude, one time we had a show, and I don't know why the show was at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or something on a Saturday. Saturday? It was a lot. live or event. Or a Sunday? Yeah, we had a live event. That's early. Um, Jericho knows everybody, and he was like, hey, the Red Hot Chili Peppers are playing in our next town, which was only an hour away. Oh, and yeah. um, he's like, if anybody wants to go, he has a freaking box. Like a whole suite. Bro. So we were like, uh, yeah, we want to go. We drove to the next town. Everybody was able to, like, Go to their hotel, check in, shower. We ate. Me and Sasha just went to go eat, had a drink. We went to the freaking suite, watch Red Hot Chili Peppers, and like, look yeah. at those pants. I know I've got I love the drummer. So the drummer is his like good friend. He looks like Will Ferrell in that he picture. Does. Oh my god! Wow. He snuck up in there. Yeah, so he's friends with him. Um, he actually came to our show the next day. He like hung out with us after the show. Jericho's just a freaking. And that's the only time I've seen them live, but it was, like, one of the coolest experiences of my life. So crazy. Yeah, he's a wizard, man. Yeah. How long, how uh, long ago was this? Mm, years? Yeah, maybe, like, three years ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah. no, okay, cool. So Yeah. Okay. Uh, th that's I had, like, one concert connect hook hookup one time, and that was when um, they were doing Rolling Loud down in Miami, mm -hmm. and Flatbush Zombies Juice helped, gave us tickets to go down there. And I've seen DMX. I oh, seen cool. yeah, like backstage. I got backstage passes oh, yeah. all day, and it's that festival. So everybody's just walking around. Oh, that's so, so you're just crazy. walking around with all these freaking celebrities. Yep. And like they, you can get tattoos right here. Like you just that's so the music industry nuts. is so cool. It's, in, it's, it's insane. Yeah, I've seen Snoop Dogg live too. It was like a weird freaking festival yeah, too. It was yeah. like he gives a great show. Yes, he gives it, a great it, show. I didn't even go to see him. To be honest, really? I was ah, I can't even remember who else was there. That's how much he Snoop like Dogg. stole the show. He kind of just like wiped everybody else. Yeah, yeah, but it was like a, it was um, damn it, who was it? It was like a rock festival, and then Snoop Dogg was the headliner, so he didn't mix in well at all. It was so confusing, um, and like so, I was like, oh, I'll watch one of his songs because he opened up with like a song you know, of course, everybody knows his songs. I was like, oh, I'll stay for the next one. I'll stay for this one too, and mm. I ended up watching the whole thing, and I'm like, dude, I'm so happy I did. Um, He's another one deep catalog. And, uh, yeah. Just like the great thing about yeah. you want to find something that you know. Yeah, same like Lil Wayne. I just went to, or not just went to, but I've been to a Lil Wayne I've Blink One Eighty Two concert. Concerts. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Wayne and Two Chains. Awesome. Wayne and Two Chains, so good. And he he did more newer stuff. I'm like, dude, you could still go back and do like yeah. a whole lot of older yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. you would be here for like three out four hours if yeah. you did. I remember I went to a show one time, and the the concert it ended up being. I don't know if you're familiar, ever heard the rapper Plies. But hmm. Plies, mm -hmm. then Lil right. Wayne, then LL Cool J. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a awesome. cluster of just everything. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I LL mean, cool love, J. like a lollipop, and everything's just all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like okay. I don't know how to feel right now. So, like, me and my sister was looking at each other like, they did not set this show up right because. <laughs> LL came out. He was like the headliner too, and like all everybody in the crowd was like sixteen, and they didn't like grow up on his music. Yeah, so yeah kind of quiet. Yeah, I was like, I felt bad for LL. You know what I mean, I felt bad for him. My was yeah. like, <laughs> my experience was weird because like you have DMX, legend, been listening to you since, to you since the nineties. Then like Lil Nas X walks by. I'm like, <laughs> there's like too many generations apart right yeah. now. Yeah, but was, it works somehow. I somehow mean, they it just works. bring in all the all kinds of different people. You know? so, but you're from you're from the same. We're all around the same age group, so. You remember being young, getting up, being like, okay, this new album's out. I'm actually going to go purchase it. Yeah. I'm actually going to go buy it. I miss that feeling so yeah, much. You know, me too. What's the last album you remember like going to physically buy? I know it was a long time ago. This is a tough one. Like going to a store. Physically yeah, it, getting it, a and not, not like vinyls, because I'll still buy vinyls that, well, and that stuff, too. you know? Oh, um, oh, yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of hard. Well, vinyl would be like getting an older um, record, right? Or would you get new records? Yeah, I still get new newer records. I would, like yeah, I got. That yeah, that counts. Okay. Um, well, the lead singer of Paramore, <laughs> Haley Williams, had a solo album just come out um, during all this quarantine stuff. So her album's called Pedals for Armor, and I've purchased that one. Okay. So that would be the last one. But I one. don't remember like going to a store. Like there's a store called Media Play at uh, my local mall that I would go to and buy CDs or obviously like Tower Records. Yep. I can yeah. go and buy CDs. And they used to sell WWE tickets too. Yes, but that was where I used uh, to like. California guy. Right yeah. Um, but I don't know like the last one. That sucks. Man, you know, you used Man, to go, I'm to, trying uh, to, think now go too. to the music store. You'd get that. You'd look at, look, put your finger through all the CDs. Yeah. <laughs> Scan it. <laughs> F Y E. Oh yeah, they, so you can they sample pay like it. Thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. But those thirty seconds be the best things. Like I'm buying this. Yep. Yeah. You, that one song. That yeah. one song, and it, it always cut in like the middle of it. It like be in the middle of something. You're like, yep, that's it. Yeah. And the CDs be like twenty two dollars, but it'd be worth it. Right? Yeah. I remember it was the, I the that. It was, when I heard like that snippet, that fifteen seconds of Strawberry Bubblegum from Justin Timberlake. I was like. <laughs> This is it. Yeah. This, is it. <laughs> this is it. Where's my wallet? Mom! <laughs> I bought the hell out of that album. Yeah. And you can spend like, so much time in those stores, oh, too. So many. You, I would I would always come out with, like, three CDs. Like, okay, I know I could only get one. Which one am yep. I going to get? I was like, $15. And I'm, dang it. I would, I would go for one, but then I'd be like, then I see, uh, me, I would always get, like, an uh, old movie. Uh, that would, oh, that would yeah. get me. I'd, I'd be walking away. I'm like, this is my one CD. Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Every <laughs> single got me. time, I'd be like. Yep. The bargain bin. Walk down, you'd be like. Oh, man. <laughs> yep. Let's go ahead. And <laughs> yep. Go ahead. <laughs> Man. They did that on purpose too. Yeah. Like every time you get in line, yeah. there's all that freaking yeah. buy this. It's you on sale. You, you tried that to glitch, but like, don't look, don't look, don't yeah. look. And then you just look, like, oh God, I gotta get this too. Yeah. It's on clearance, you know, someone returning. I'm like, if this CD's scratched, oh, yeah. I'm gonna oh, be oh my god. Yo, look at that. Yeah. Yo. It's scratched. My so Busta Rhyme CD was scratched. Damn. The Big Bang um uh, Not theory. the Big Bang album. Yeah. <laughs> the Big Bang album was scratched. But somehow, I never returned it. I just powered through it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, any of that. I know it's going to skip right here, but yeah. it'll get past it. Just powered through yeah. it. Yeah. I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That little anti skip. Anti skip never worked. Never no, worked. It never, never worked. worked. <laughs> never worked. I flip it upside down, be like, yeah, this way. it's still skipping. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> like, or like when they did it on games, like this one level always. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, like the loading screen's like eight minutes long. It's yeah. like. Oh, so you didn't? Have, oh, you you went through the you went through the no memory card time where you had to keep the game on because you had you couldn't afford the memory card. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Tony, yeah. uh-huh. I need a memory card. Mind. Memory card. Yeah. I just got you the game. What you need a memory card for? Like, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> memory. Just keep the game on all night. Yeah. The cards just be like funny. thirty bucks too. The yeah. cards were yeah. expensive. And memory they cards fill up so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I I remember I put Metal Gear on it that just took the whole card. I'm like, mm. I need two. Yeah. yeah. Metal Gear like used to used to. Eat up so much memory. The wrestling games used to too. Yeah, did they? I would, WCW I would always versus the world and all them. Oh yeah, which one was it? Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal. Or Bust a Groove. When you were talking about music from video games, you guys mm-hmm. ever played Bust a Groove? I was PlayStation. I remember Rock. it, but okay. I never had it. It was literally the easiest dancing game, where it's just like you hit the button on every four <laughs> beat, like ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 and I'm like, I can do this. Push buttons every four, the fourth beat. But they had like Jamiroquai on there, like that music was oh, music Lord. that I never listened to. But now when I hear it back, I'm like, oh, it just takes you back to that game. Bust the groove. Yeah, me and my brother were so good. My, my uh, game was a uh, Paul Rapper. Paul Rapper oh, the yeah, rapper. Oh yeah, I would play that Bruh, too. Step on the gas. Mm-hmm. Like, but his was like something was off with his. It was rhyme. a little weird. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Sounds like a little. I put the cake in the oven. Yeah. I'm like, wait, why is the I'm getting excellent. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's he talking about? Yeah. yeah. I'll be a little off. Like, I'm dry, I'm failing my driving test. But I'm, what? <laughs> like, like, um, what are the games you playing now? Like, to me right now is a, like, I'd say the past two, three years has been like a really weird realm of like video game. You're getting like one or two good games out of the whole year. Mm. Yeah, I'm not really a, I don't really play anymore. I play on with Woods, obviously, on Up, Up, Down, Down. Yeah. Um, my nephew and I will play uh, that arms game because they love the Nintendo Ooh, Switch. Arms. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't, so I'm, I'm out okay, of Okay, yeah. So I will play Switch or, um, I mean, arms or like Mario Kart or whatever. Like, yeah. I honestly haven't played games, in, which you think I would be during all this, but I haven't. And if I do, it'll be like a, 
I went back to play Tony Hawk or went back to play Buster Groove yeah, or Crash Bandicoot was my favorite game. We went back and got Tekken 3. Awesome. Yeah, we yeah. Like, I'm like, three right now. We're oh, yeah? So, oh. <laughs> we went 12 rounds on Fight Night. Oh, Twice. my God. Twice. 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 I was like, <sighs> Damn! Yeah. It was we. We are our hands are sweating because yeah. we're like countering. And we're like I'm like, oh yeah. dog, I need a break. See, so I like took so much time off video games. So when I go back, like I play Crash Bandicoot, and I'll be playing. I, there's a Crash that, Four coming out now soon. Yeah, but there's one. There's a trilogy that yeah. has all of them. So that's yeah. what I got, and I'm like, yeah, that's so good at Aren't this level. So good at this. No, I Spyro. Oh, Spyro's oh, awesome too. I'm on Crash Bandicoot right now. Yeah, and I'm not as good as I used to be. It's making me so oh, mad. That, that hurts. That hurts my soul. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Talking about this, mm-hmm. you think you could just go back and pick up, and I can, yeah. I can play uh, SmackDown Two, know your role like I used to. Mm-hmm. Oh my you god! You play the Dudley Boys and do the 3D and all mm-hmm. that. Now I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, no, yeah. I, I'm getting worse now. I'm I like, forgot. I forgot the cheese moves, yeah, like the moves oh, that you just couldn't Lord. block with them like light little corners. I'm like, if you get in this little crevice right here, they can't touch you. <laughs> like I forgot those things now. Yeah. Like there was some there was some levels oh, I could manipulate and crash on the second one. Crash 2, I could manipulate a lot. I got there was like this corner ledge on this one level, like it was a mushroom or something like that. I could just yeah. hop up here and then hop up there and get it. But I, I was cheesing the game. I was supposed to do that. Now when you they do that, they took all that out, and I'm like, wait, I'm just sliding off that mushroom uh, now. I'm like, no, I want my mushroom back. Yeah. Like, well, it was like it they was, took all that out. It was like I was playing. Um, so I was playing with my homie about three. It's months too clean ago. too. It's too clean of a game. I don't like. Yeah. It. I was playing. Shut your mouth, right? Mm-hmm. Great game, great game. This is when He's Brock came. Game. He was unstoppable in that game. He, no, he was unstoppable. And here comes the pain. Here comes the pain. He, he, you couldn't do nothing with that. Yeah, game. I mean, it was Goldberg called "Here Comes like, the Pain." Right. Like, and he was on the, the cover. Goldberg, I'm like, you right. spear somebody twice. It's like a rap. You go, uh, Jackhammer, we're going home. Yep. And <laughs> it's like it's crazy because I would like I was sitting there, I was playing with my homie. I'm like, I'm about to hold on now. And I was like getting dusted. I'm like, yeah, I don't have this no more. Yeah. I'm, I'm out. I'm out my yeah. prime. I'm, I'm done. I'm curious for you guys ever played WCW Thunder? I did. I was awful at those games. Dude, I was. Only thing I, was I liked was awful. the taunting at the menu screen. <laughs> yeah, dude. Are the little videos? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, you want a rowdy, rowdy, and a rowdy. And like all of them, like, I memorized all of those freaking promos. Kevin Nash said, go on, go on. Go yeah, on. yeah. Kevin don't like, don't, don't choose me. me. Don't bet me. Yeah. Go on, go ahead. Dude, but. Oh, my that bro- one. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Go pick some other guy, like. Yeah. Go on. Oh, Scott Hall, whatever you would say. He was getting paid. He didn't want to work that Oh, day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my brother and I, we were. I think that was my first wrestling game. So we, we, you can literally. I, we were the Steiner brothers. Like he was. Uh, damn, Mike. who was Scott? I don't remember who was who. But we were always the Steiner brothers wrestling each other, and we would always do the same buttons, same buttons. Pile driver, pile <laughs> driver, cheese. Yeah, and he never Jeez. knew. <laughs> he never knew how to bring out. Like I would press select. And then another wrestler would come out and help me win. He's like, how do you do that? And I never <laughs> told him how I did it I every, miss, over and over. Honestly, I miss the days of not knowing how to do certain yeah. things. You had to buy the guide. Yes. That's the only way you I knew because they didn't tell you. Life. Days, game Shark and all that. Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. miss that. Yeah. Having your book of cheat codes written mm-hmm. in or your one paper. Yep. I miss we that had so all much. Of that. I used to buy every James Bond game and I had the strategy guide like oh, secret vest over here. The Lara Croft the, the, Tomb Raider the, the, the to- guide. Yeah. Like, where oh. to find that that torch in this. Yeah. Uh, the hidden yeah. treasure. I miss that so oh. much. Now you just YouTube. I'm lazy now. I'm just like... It, it, it's funny how like the, the games have gotten so much bigger. Like It's taken... I can't tell you how long it took me to like upload Red Dead. It, I had to turn the PlayStation off for like three days. Uh-huh. And it sounded like a vacuum. <laughs> it was off. <laughs> and it sounded like a vacuum because it was just getting 100 gigs or something yeah. like that. That and Last of Us too. And like... I'm like, why does the game feel even more broken? Like there's... <laughs> Why is this? I, I'm getting stuck on things and like it's glitching. People are going through me. Like this just feels so much more broken now ever. And it's like a hundred thousand times more powerful of a yeah. system. And I don't get it when I had way more fun on like divide the graphics by like 50. Right. It was just like I couldn't see his face. It was just lines yeah. or stuff like that. Or just like box fists. Yeah. <laughs> like like I'll I'll take all the nice graphics away if I can just have fun playing the game. I know. And I'm Put losing too much time into it. It's too much time. Yeah. I'm like, look at this 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 bag flies and floats through the air so eloquently. The water, the glaze is so pretty. Look at the mountains. I'm like, I can't move. Bro. My guy is stuck. Bro. This is cool at all. The greatest thing about this game is when you respawn and the cactus is right there. <laughs> oh! The body decomposed after time went by. Ooh! Like, this is fantastic. 
I, I shot this man eight times and I missed. Right. I don't know what to do. I can't move. The right. camera's stuck in this corner and I can't <laughs> see where I, who I'm fighting. I am jogging when I'm supposed to be walking. <laughs> <laughs> if I put the controller down, the camera's still moving. <laughs> like, what is happening? Uh, um, so, you're still, you, you sports fan. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Are you paying attention to the NBA in the bubble right a now? Little, I did at first. It was like Lakers and Clippers, and that was it. I haven't really. Yeah, Lakers are number one. Like, uh, I'm I'm dabbling in it. I'm not as invested. Yeah. Anybody else in as, as invested? It's kind of weird. They're doing the best they can with the situation. Yeah, digital it's just like us, stuff. you know? It's yeah. hard. But the court looks so much smaller now. Yeah. It looks like they playing on the park down the street. Yeah. <laughs> it don't look the same. It looks yeah. like the people. The people makes the court look way bigger. Yeah. Now it's like you're literally taking two dribbles. They're right at the opposite three point line. Yeah. You're like what? Like this college court? Like it doesn't even. It doesn't look the same. They're doing their best, and then they have like this Maybe built it's in. Not. Right. UFC's cage is smaller, right? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. The yeah. NBA courts look smaller, at least slightly smaller. Mm. They're getting up and down that court like. Crazy fast. They're also seven foot everything, so. Very true. But, <laughs> but like, yeah, you know, like, like, that's pretty. It's gorgeous. It, I feel like I'm playing NBA 2K Rec, like, rec League, yeah. the Pro Am. Yeah. It looks like I'm playing 2K. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this looks that's like nice. the game. It looks like the created games. Yeah. The created courts, I meant. But I don't know. I'm not as. This is kind of weird. Like, Lakers home court, then they get off the court, then the Blazers come on, Blazers home court. They leave off YMCA basketball. <laughs> it, <laughs> might, <laughs> it might be, like, not as invested because it was just, like, in the middle of the season, too, where it's like yeah. now they're picking back up. It's, I don't know if it was, like, one full season from start to finish. Maybe you'd be into it, like, like this. Yeah. But it's kind of just because it was, like, stopped, and now they're picking back up. That's it's hard different. To it's kind of weird. They're in a bubble. So now all these guys got to be around each other all the time. Mm -hmm. they no families. No, there's no separation now. Everybody's just in their hotel rooms, and it's just this. Oof. You got nothing to do that but focus on that playbook. Rough. Yeah. You better focus on that playbook. You ain't seeing your wives around a bunch of dudes all day. Like, all right, bro, I don't, I don't got nothing to say today. Are they, <laughs> are they, like, aren't they allowed to have their families there if they wanted? Nope. nope. No. No. I thought I heard that they were, if you wanted your family there. They're on jury duty right now. How long are they, they there? You can't leave unless it's an emergency. Death yeah. in the family type thing. Yeah. How can't long, leave. How long are they there? How long is this? The, they're, they they're about to start the playoffs. <sighs> they're about so, to. <laughs> a few months? It's going to be months? like a month a and a months? half. A month and a half, two months. Damn. Yep. Coming in. Yeah, they are locked in. It's like basic training. Well. Like, you can call. You take, get a quota. Call your mama. Well, good for them. I mean, thank you, NBA. They're doing mm. it for us. There you are. And last but not least, some new current events, man. We got uh, Dwayne Johnson and Miss Danny Garcia buying the XFL. Damn, I know. Power move. That is crazy. What do you think about this? I Like, who else can do that but The Rock, you know? True. Like, I saw that tweet and it's like, $15 million or whatever. Just like, pennies. who? who and you know it's going to be like, if it's, he's in charge of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody just, he's just the man, you know? Yeah. yeah, there's no way it won't be a success. Yeah. No, uh, no, you know he, he's so he has a, he has his hand on the pulse of like pop culture right now. Yes, he knows what's coming and yes. he knows what's current. You're right. So he's going to be ahead of the curve. Pow, power move. Damn, that's insane. Jesus, that's amazing. Yeah, it's his ex-wife, right? Yep. So like, yep. imagine Shout that. Out <laughs> <laughs> Looks just like her, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah. crazy. We've, we've had her on here twice. Yeah, and like we like never talk about her dad. This is the only time I will. But I'm like, yeah, when this L XFL league is passed down to you <laughs> in the future, <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna be 45. I can still run a nice little cross route. <laughs> Boom. Hey man, if you got, if you need any of them cheesy rap team songs, yo, yeah. win. We're, we're gonna do the soundtrack to the whole oh, thing. We're gonna do the soundtrack to the whole thing. That's just you know, awesome. just just give us an hour. We got it. I want a jersey that says Swerve City on the back too. Mm. Yeah. I don't even know the name of the teams. I know there's a Seattle one, but Damn, they know. look cool. They just look powerful. Yeah, they do. They look they powerful. Look, wow. Like, how much is this? All right, it's on your PayPal. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And she just looks like she knows what the hell she's doing. Like, she, damn. It's going to be interesting to see. They look like they'd be at the other side of The Apprentice. Like, <laughs> yeah. you presenting your yeah. ideas to them. They're like, yeah. mm, mm, no, not good enough. <laughs> no, we've done that last year. We invested yeah. in it. They damn, made us that's millions. crazy, dude. But yeah, they, they, it's, just, it's just really happy to see it. Like, the culture shift of this. 
Yes. You know, it was like something that failed like years ago. And now it's like, now it's ran by them. I know. It's just mind blowing. Yes. 2020 has been like some really, really lows, but then there's been some like highs. And this is one of the highs you could take from this. And just think, think like back to, because obviously a wrestling fan. So when I think The Rock was one of my favorite wrestlers, like to where he and what he's doing now, he just bought the XFL. What the hell? Like, yeah. like and everything he's doing. He had, he was doing this on on Ballers. Yeah. yeah. So I was yeah. like, what? Is, it's he's just, living the real life. It blew my mind. So everybody's like, so I, I've been seeing tweets about like, oh, he's t- t- making the next season of Ballers going to be the XFL. I'm like, ah, I think he's not even doing the show. I think he's living it now. Yeah, yeah. He's like literally living out everything he's like portrayed right. in movies and stuff. It's weird. He's going to save the earth at one point. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, he is. One leg, jump on, one Realize catch that. Yep. What, what, catch that skyscraper, one yep. ledge. Oh. I'm, I don't see it happening. He's already doing all Titan games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's there. But, um, yeah, we're going to close this episode out, man. Cool. Thank you for coming through. Yeah. Um, we always like to um, have the guests leave off the audience with something uh, inspirational, like talk about like a real low, dealing with adversities, breaking through boundaries. Like y'all broke barriers for women's wrestling all over the world. Talk about like say something to the audience that's just like builds their confidence because me right now everybody's confidence is really low. Swerve yeah. City is about building confidence. Talking about the enlightening thing, enlighten like talk about like the positive things in the world that we can do. We can do to change, feel better about ourselves. Maybe somebody at home is watching this. They're going through some lows, feeling bad. Tell us a little story or overcoming mm. adversity, a little struggle. Damn struggle. I don't know. I mean, I always, I guess, would always talk about wrestling i don't know if i can give you like a story that'll like oh, just, you know shed yeah. some light but like a feel a feel good yeah, yeah like i i think during this time during the quarantine and all this stuff uh for me personally it's really because this is the most time that we've had off in wrestling or in wwe i've had a lot of time to worry about myself and be a little selfish and kind of give a little self-love and self-care and just kind of be like all right, let's not think about all the craziness. Like, in a way, this could be the universe's blessing in disguise for us, where it's like we were always, our life was like social media, then we go to work, then we go to school, then we do this, then we do this, and when I get home, I'm going to look at social media, and I'm going to do, we're always on this, like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, Mm -hmm. for everybody. It seemed like everybody I know is just in this hamster wheel of work and in the same routine. Um, So I hope that uh, during this time that you guys have taken the time to be like, you know what, let me look myself in the mirror. Let me sit alone and let me think, am I doing what's right for me? Am I going where I want to go? And um, I don't know, just finding your path because it's really – I just realized it during all of this that I was just going and pursuing my wrestling love and career. But there's so much more to life and everything. So Mm -hmm. um, appreciate – family and friends around you and know that we're all in this together and we're um even outside of quarantine stuff if there's anything that you're ever going through and you feel like you're alone you're definitely not alone um you could reach out to these guys if you're watching it now you can reach out to me like always just reach out a hand and and ask for help no matter what it is because it's there and because people love you we love you and uh it might take a long time to realize it, but you are uh, important, special, and worth it. Beautiful. Couldn't have said it any better. Cool. Truly. Thank you for coming through, Bailey. Everybody knows how to find you. Thank you for blessing us with your time and your presence. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. It's been very fun. Man, and Thank as always. Much. Oh, any plugs? Last second plugs? What yeah. Do do with it? Real quick, real quick. Once again, GPS Erica Sun is coming out. Thanks. Giving day for you guys uh, from humble beginnings is now currently on all platforms as well. Our first album together, so you guys tune in on that. Uh, hit up all things uh, digital markets for music that we have going on. Uh, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, this is our current cool. single right here, one zero eight seven seven one six two. If you really dig a little deeper, you understand the title of what that means. We put it out at a, at a very pointed time. That is very much needed in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our, our two singles that are out right now is one zero eight seven seven one six two and Black Boy, which is both on the both uh, 
all digital platforms right now. So make sure you guys go and cop that. And everything of Sword City Podcast, youtube.com backslash Sword City Podcast, twitter.com backslash Sword City Pod, and become a patron at patreon.com backslash Sword City Podcast. I am on all social media markets at TZ Scott. Follow me, things of that nature. And as always, be confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Oh, you're going to get a pop pop. Shout out, Swole. <laughs>